All right, today's lesson is lesson number 59. This is exponent properties and graphing exponential functions. So we're gonna review some of the exponent properties that you guys learned in one of the very first lessons in this class. And then we're gonna use those properties to figure out points on a table so that we can graph exponential functions. Okay, so here are, um, here's the review of some of the basic exponent properties. Okay, if we have a to the zero, so any number raised to the zero power, that's just gonna be one. And then any number, if I raise it to a negative power, I can always flip this, so this becomes one over a to the n. Okay, so to, in order to get rid of the negative, I have to flip this fraction, right? This is kind of like a over one, so I have to flip it to get rid of it. All right, then anything to the first power is just itself, right? So that would be a. Okay, and then down here there's just some properties um, that are also important to remember. So if I'm multiplying with like bases, I add the exponents. If I'm dividing, I subtract the exponents. Okay, then I have, if I have a, um, a product, so if I have two things being multiplied together and they're both being raised to a power, I can split that up and raise each of them to the power separately. Okay, and then same idea over division. I can s kind of distribute in this exponent over division. So I get a to the n divided by b to the n. Okay, and if I have something squared or cubed and then in parentheses that's being squared or cubed, um, in order to figure that out, I multiply the exponents. Okay, so whatever number this is times whatever number this is. All right, so here are the steps for how we want to graph these exponential functions. This is the standard form. Sorry, this is the standard form. And the first thing we're going to do is identify which x value makes the exponent 0. So we'll look at x minus h and set it equal to 0, basically. So say, for example, we had x plus 2, or x minus 2, excuse me, then we would have x equals 2 as kind of a critical point, right? That's where the exponent equals 0. So I'm going to use that as the middle point on my table, and I'm going to go three points to the right and three points to the left. Okay, so say I made a table, and I put 2 in the middle, then I would go up to 3, 4, and 5, and down to 1, 0, and negative 1 for my x values, okay? Then step three says to plug in these x values to the original equation to find the y values, okay? So you're gonna solve for what goes here. And then you would plot these points and sketch the curve. Okay, so here is our first example. This is y equals negative four times two to the x, so I could say, okay, I know my a is negative four, I know b is two. And in order for the exponent to be zero, I just have to have x be zero. So for my table, I'm gonna go down three, so I'll go from negative three up to positive three. Okay, and then for y, I'm gonna just set that equal to my original equation. Okay, then I'll start solving for these. So I'm just gonna plug in those x values for y I have to solve for y, so it would be y equals negative 4 times 2 to the negative third power. Remember from the properties, when I have um, a number to, the ne to a negative power, I just take the reciprocal and raise it to that power, so this is the same as negative 4 times 1 over 2 to the third. And that's just negative 4 times 1 eighth, which I can reduce to negative 1 half. Okay, then um, similar situation with these other values. So if I take negative two, I have negative four times two to the negative two power, which is just negative four times one fourth, right? Again, flipping it and then squaring, I get one fourth. So uh, negative four times one fourth, the fours cancel out and I just get that equals negative one. Okay, plugging in negative one. 2 to the negative first power would give me a 1 half, it just flips it, and that gives me negative 2. 
Okay, so, so far I have negative 3, negative 1 half plotted. Then I have negative 2, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 2. Okay, so I have three points plotted on my graph so far. I'm going to keep going with these. If I plug in 0, 2 to the 0 is just 1, so I get negative 4. Plugging in 1, 2 to the first power is just 2, so I get negative 8. And plugging in 3, or sorry, plugging in 2, I get 2 squared is 4, times negative 4 is negative 16. And plugging in 3, I get negative 4 times 2 to the third, which is just negative 4 times 8, or negative 32. Okay, so let's plot these last points. So at 0, negative 4, I'm there. 1, negative 8 is there. And then 2, negative 16. And 3, negative 32 would be off my graph. Okay, so there's my sketch of the graph. And... You can see on one side it kind of goes almost to a horizontal line and the other side is going almost to a vertical line. Okay, so that's something that's going to characterize these exponential functions. Okay, our, this is our next example. So now I have 5 times 1 half to the x plus 2 minus 1. So this is kind of as difficult as it's going to be. I have a number in every one of those spaces, right? So. First, I'm going to look where should I put the middle of my table, and that's when x plus 2 equals 0, or x equals negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to make my table, and I'll go from negative 5 now to 1. Again, putting negative 2 in the middle here. Okay, and then y is just my original function. And I'll set up what this first one would be. So I have 5 times 1 half. And then negative 5 plus 2 gives me a negative 3. And I'll have that minus 1. Okay, the 1 half to the negative third power is going to be 1 eighth. Sorry about that. Okay, so 1 half to the negative third power. Again, I would flip it and then raise it to the third power. So I could think of it as 1 eighth and then I flip. Or I could think of it as flipping first, so I get 2, and then I can change the sign so it's 2 to the third power, which would just be 8. So 5 times 8 is 40, minus 1 is 39. Okay, and the next one, I would have negative 2 as my exponent, because the negative 4 plus 2 gives me a negative 2. Then negative 3 plus 2 gives me negative 1. Negative 2 plus 2 gives me 0 as an exponent. Negative 1 plus 2 gives me 1. 0 gives me 2. And 1 gives me an exponent of 3. Okay, so starting to solve these. Up here, I get 1 half to the negative 2. So that would have me flip it. So it's 2. And then I can just take it to the second power. So 2 squared is 4. Then 5 times... 4 is 20, minus 1 is 19. Okay, with 1 half to the negative 1, I would just flip. So I have 5 times 2 is 10, minus 1 is 9. 1 half to the 0 power is just 1. So this is 5 times 1, which is 5, minus 1 is 4. Um, then below that, I get some fractions. So I have 5 times 1 half is 5 halves, minus 1, which is like minus 2 halves, gives me 3 halves, or 1 and a half. Okay, one half squared would be one fourth, so this gives me five fourths. Um, which I could think of as one and one fourth, and then subtracting one just gives me one fourth. Here I have one eighth times five minus one, which gives me five eighths minus one, or five eighths minus eight eighths, which is just negative three eighths. Okay, so plotting these points, negative 539 is off the graph, negative 419 is here, negative 39 is here, negative 2, 4, negative 1, comma, 1 and a half, 0, comma, 1 fourth, and then 1, comma, negative 3 eighths. Okay, so you notice when I sketch this curve, again, I have one side of my graph kind of leveling out to be horizontal over here, and this side's going vertical.
All right, and here's our last example. So first thing I'm going to do is see when my exponent is 0. For this one, it's just x equals 0. Okay, I make my table with x and y. Since x is the looking for when the exponent is 0 gives me the middle point in my table, so I go three points in either direction, and then my y is just the original equation. Okay, and I'll set these up so I have... I'm just plugging in x for plugging in x in each of these equations, okay? So, uh, starting to look at the first one, 2 to the negative 3, or 2 to the negative 3rd power, means I can take 2 to the 3rd first, so that would be 8, and then I want to flip it, so that would be 1 8. Okay, so I take 1 8 times 3, that'll give me 3 8, then plus 2, I get 2 and 3 8. Okay, to the negative 2, I take 2 squared, which gives me 4, but flip it so it's 1 fourth, times 3 is 3 fourths, plus 2 is 2 and 3 fourths. Oh, and here's uh, graphing that first point. Okay, so 2 and 3 fourths. That's going to be... Alright, sorry. So, uh, 2 to the negative 1 now, moving on, is 1 half, times 3 would be 3 halves plus 2, so I have 3 halves is the same as 1 and 1 half, so 1 and a half plus 2 gives me 3 and a half. Then 2 to the 0 is just 1, times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5, and I get these for the other points. Okay, graphing those, I end up here at negative 2, at negative 1 I'm at 3 and a half, at, na at 0 I'm at 5, 1, I'm at 8, 2, I'm at 14, and then 3, I'm off the graph. So we know it goes kind of steep after that. So this could be my um, approximate graph here. Okay, it's just this is my sketch. And again, you'll see that we have an asymptote. If you look at the number, you realize that it's getting horizontal near 2. And you can see this is a 2. And in the last example, it was getting horizontal ignore the uh, messiness, is getting horizontal near negative 1, and we had a negative 1 here. Okay, so just an interesting observation there. All right, and uh, that's the last one that we're going to do here today. So go ahead and try the problems on the homework, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.